As a child in Cambodia, Kiri Sweet loved a sticky rice cake wrapped in banana leaves. Sharing that snack in February 2001 with her two children in their Seattle home made her want to put her kids in touch with Khmer culture. I hadn't really um, made a way for them to connect with you know, Cambodian culture and Cambodian heritage in a way that made it meaningful for them. So the graphic designer decided to write and illustrate a book on Cambodia for her kids. Born in Thailand in 1992, Sweet grew up in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. In 2009, the family moved to Seattle, where there is a substantial Cambodian community. Her book highlights Cambodia's cultural and architectural heritage. It includes basic pronunciation instruction in Khmer, the language spoken by most Cambodians. Viel Srai. R is for rice paddy. She sees her book as a way for all children in the United States and elsewhere to explore Cambodia's rich culture. Um, a lot of it was informed by and like choosing these words was informed by my childhood and um, growing up there and what I had experienced firsthand. This is an ABC book about Cambodia. The language needs to be there too, you know, as like introduction, as an introduction to the culture and the language and about the country. Other English language children's books about Cambodia highlight the Khmer Rouge genocide and the immigrant narrative, switch ABCs of Cambodia cast Cambodia in a different light. I'm hoping <laughs> we'll respond to it and see, yeah, like that's me. I'm also hoping that, you know, we can put Cambodia on the map and we can say this, this is the country that I'm from and I'm really proud of it. And, you know, I want you to learn more about it too. And here's, here's a fun way to learn about it. In a few months, the book will be available to those who backed the book on Kickstarter, the platform which used to fund its production. After that, it will be available for curious kids and adults. Soksarina Thane for VOA News, Chicago, Illinois. Almost 1,500 years ago, a monumental sculpture of the Hindu god Krishna was carved into the sacred mountain of Phnom Da in southern Cambodia. More recently, the sculpture has traveled to France, Belgium, and Spain before a recent stop in America. Right now, the larger-than-life-size sculpture, Krishna Lifting Mount Govardhan, is being featured in an exhibition at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Asian Art in Washington. We actually know the original location of, um, of the sculpture. It was in a cave temple about halfway up the mountain, and it was really a site-specific installation. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing with this exhibition is trying to bring the original landscape and the whole religious and sociological um, culture that created this masterful sculpture um, into the space of our museum. The exhibition titled Revealing Krishna, Journey to Cambodia's Sacred Mountain centers on the Krishna sculpture, which was restored by staff at the Clifton Museum of Art in partnership with the National Museum of Cambodia. Before the 13th century, the now Buddhist nations of Cambodia was one a Hindu kingdom full of Hindu structures and sculptures. Krishna lifting Mount Govardhan portrays the eight-year-old Krishna who lifted a mountain with just one finger to shield the villagers and cattle from the raging storm sent by the angry god of rain, Indra. This image of Krishna lifting the mountain that's in this floodplain in the Mekong Delta, um, an area that's agricultural based, that's reliant on the monsoon, this image of the flood and of a storm would be really powerful. So having this beautiful sculpture of Krishna um, just standing inside of a cave as if he really is lifting up the mountain would be an extremely powerful and resonant emblem. Of protection. Contemporary Cambodian communities worldwide are predominantly Buddhist, and most of the ancient Hindu masterpieces like Krishna 
and the Angkor Wat Temple complex have been adapted to Buddhist practices. The immersive exhibition also features a 30-minute documentary about Buddhism and how ancient religious sites played a role in the belief journey of four Cambodian survivors who escaped the communist Khmer Rouge regime that killed more than 1.7 million people in the late 1970s. Well, I was, uh, yeah, and I was able to put together a short documentary film called Satu. Because, you know, when you go to um, the temple, when you pray, you always say Satu, Satu, Satu three times. The family members who died in war. Luong Eng, best-selling author of First They Kill My Father, is one of the four survivors in Satuk and co-narrates the exhibition's visual timeline with Angelina Jolie. She said this exhibition is a great honor for Cambodia. I'm so happy to see people walking through the exhibit and enjoying my art and culture and music and scenery because we as Khmer people know how beautiful Sukhmai is. Revealing Krishna's journey to Cambodia's sacred mountain is on view for free through September 18. Chatra Chap for VOA News, Washington.